This is the great wheel I just made. Uh, there's the ratchet and the click and the click spring. And that's what we're going to be doing on this video. We'll start by making a 45 degree cutter to cut our ratchet wheel. And we'll put in a uh, high speed steel blank and cut with an 8 degree relief. And check our 45 degree. And there we go. We got our cutter ready. So now we're over on the Sherline lathe and we're cutting out the teeth with a six degree undercut uh, to make it a nice ratchet wheel. This is all according to uh, W.R. Smith's uh, How to Build a Grasshopper Clock. And this is going to be the uh, ratchet for the great wheel. And there it goes. And there's the final pass on that ratchet wheel. And here's a good look at it. Nice finish on the, on the teeth. Uh, the single point cutter worked quite well. So now we're going back down into the shop and we're gonna set up the gear blank. This is a quarter inch piece of engraver's brass. And on the bandsaw, we're cutting out a rough shape. Get it as close as I can with the bandsaw. And then We'll move it over here to the saw, uh, to the sander to uh, get it down. I just don't want the interrupted cuts to be too much. And there's now it's on a piece of glass and it's being sanded flat. Uh, just uh, enough to get everything off of there nice. So I'm going to put it onto a super glue arbor. And here we are with the super glue arbor. Uh, cleaning off the face. And then we'll clean out the grooves so that we can get air to the glue. And I store them with the glue on them just like this so that the oxidation doesn't get involved. I've applied some glue to it now and we're putting on that uh, quarter inch piece of uh, brass. And okay, it's a couple hours later and now I got it on the Sherline lathe and I'm bringing it down to the specs that are, uh, that uh, W.R. Smith calls for for this great wheel. And uh, we've got a little bit of a center a recess in there. And uh, I'm making it just a little oversized. I'll cut it down to size uh, once I get to the correct depth on this outer rim here. Uh, so we'll make a couple more passes here and then check it until we get to the, uh, uh, the depth that we need. I used it to a painting bit, a modified one a little that I modified a little and as I was sharpening it I shut the camera off and I came back and I did it and I forgot to turn the camera back on. So there you go, that's just a look at how I did it. Now we'll put our ratchet wheel in there, get a look how, see how it fits in there. And we're going to put in a temporary center so that when we uh, start cutting our, uh, our teeth we'll be able to get a, a line up our cutter correctly. Now we're coming down to our OD, uh, make sure that we got the right size. So we're getting ready to get these teeth on there. But before we do that, we want to put a little dicum on there. So as we're cutting the teeth, we can, uh, the island between the teeth, we can see how our, uh, our tool depth is uh, going uh, so that the depth of the teeth is correct. And we got it ready. So now we're going to make a gear cutter. And this is all done according to uh, Robert Porter's book. And there's the gear blank that I made out of one inch uh, water hardening steel. And uh, I faced it and it's been surface ground down to uh, the size that I need uh, to make uh, this uh, cutter for this great wheel. And it fits on an arbor that I made and it's just for the gear cutting. And the end sits, fits on here like this. And then when you tighten it up, it's a uh, perfect for running between centers. You can see there, they are, it's ready to run between centers. So now I've got it on the Sherline lathe and I'm facing the front side and now I'm facing the back side. And I've got a whole video out on how I cut uh, wheels. Uh, so if you want to see that uh, a little bit better, uh, go to that video. Now we're cutting 10 teeth with an eight degree offset on the slitting saw. And that being done, now we're cutting some back relief uh, so that our cutter has a little uh, little bit of back relief to it. I've polished it all up and uh, now it's ready for hardening. It's covered with boric acid and alcohol and I'm using a propane torch there to red hot. Now I just quenched it in some water and there's the uh, the final gear cutter. 
So we're ready now uh, to cut some teeth. So we got to get the shoreline ready. I'm gonna remove the motor. See that, how fast I did that? Now I'm adding the rotary table. See how fast I do this? <laughs> Okay, so now we got the vertical slide in there. We got the cutter in there and all this is in another video on cutting uh, 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 Gears uh, that I've got if you want to see more about how all this works We're making our first pass Roberts uh, Porter recommends that you make three passes with his cutters and uh, So this is just the first of uh, three passes that we'll make and We're looking at that blue island up there to uh, see how it goes. We're on our second pass now and the, between the teeth, you can see that little blue island. We're checking our depth with uh, that, how that island gets smaller and smaller. And now we're on our third and final pass, and this will finish the gear off for us. And uh, it's uh, almost ready. All right, now it's all done. We got the propane torch. It's on there pretty good. Taking a little bit of heat to get it off. I'm using the wooden end of my hammer to kind of coax it on here a little bit but it's on there pretty good there there it goes it's gonna go this time there we go now we got it in some lacquer thinners getting the dicum off getting the, all the super glue off and once again it's on the piece of glass with sandpaper to get all that off and there's the finished wheel now we're ready to make the click. We're gonna make the click post first. So I've got the wheel tied down here. We're gonna make a little hole, put the click in there so we can get a better look. It's got the hole in there and when I drilled and tapped it, now I'm gonna make a click post. We're over on the lathe, I'm using a, a, a die to uh, make it. It's one inch, uh, one eighth inch uh, tool steel. And you'll see here in a second, there's the post in there. Now I need to, got the ratchet in there and I need to mark that angle between the teeth so that we can make our click. That angle is the important part right there. I glued the piece of paper to a piece of coal roll steel and I'm cutting out a basic shape here with my bandsaw. The important part is that angle that we just made to make sure that, that we get that correct. Now that back side of the uh, click like that, a lot of that can be sanded away. So I'm over at the uh, disc sander here and I'm just taking that down to the line. Uh, saved me a lot of time. And then I removed the paper and put on the dicum uh, because now I'm using a piercing saw. And uh, if you wanna see how I set up for a piercing saw, uh, I have a video out on crossing the wheels and that shows you uh, how I use the piercing saw. Not necessarily the way it should be used or anything like that, but that's how I do it and, uh, in case you're interested in, uh, in how it gets done. And we'll just knock out this last little bit here. That little tube there, that's air being blown in there because uh, I'm on the back side of a big magnifying uh, fluorescent light magnifier so that I can see what I'm doing. Now, as you get older, that kind of stuff becomes pretty important. But let me take this apart here, take the clamp off. There you go. There's the basic shape of the click right there. We moved it over to the, uh, the vise and got it between some soft jaws here. And I'm using a file and I'm getting it down to its final shape. And I'll take it out of the vise several times and, and uh, put it in with the, ma match it with the ratchet just to make sure I'm uh, in the ballpark. Yeah, we get it down to the basic shape that we want. And now we're ready to move it over to the surface grinder. The surface grinder, we're going to uh, get it to the height that we need to fit in that recess uh, nicely uh, so that everything works correctly. And a couple of passes on each side cleans it up nicely and gets it all ready. And there it is. There's the ratchet wheel and the click together and the little recess in the great wheel uh, to show you how it all came out. Now here we are back over at the bandsaw. We're get, cutting out a piece of a engraver's brass to a rough shape that we can work with here. And it takes a couple of minutes here. Uh, not a lot of uh, uh, shape into it right now. It's just a really rough. And I'll, I'll taking it over to the disc sander. And there's not a lot of disc sanding to be done on this part. It's too small. 
Uh, so it's it's in the device now between the soft jaws and I use in the file to make the shapes that I want But it's so small it has to change positions quite a bit and you can take it out once in a while Take it over to the ratchet see where you are now I've made a uh, pile of wood here because I'm getting down to the final depth that I need uh, This is how it determines the strength of the click spring uh, How thick it is here, so I'm getting it down to something nice and, I've got a piece of coal roll steel in the vise now and I'm hammering this uh, piece of engraver's brass to harden it up and that hardening uh, gives it the spring that we need uh, to make it into a click spring. Once I get this little curve done I'll move it over and now I've got a, uh, a, a machinist uh, clamp holding it onto that piece of coal roll steel and uh, hammering away on it trying to get it to where I want it, get it to uh, behave the way I'd like it to behave. Yeah, there we go. We're getting it there now. I've transferred it over to a, a holding plate that I've got. And now we're putting in a little recess here so the screw heads won't uh, get in the way. And we're ready to install the click spring. So we got the click in there and the ratchet. I'm, ma I'm marking now in the dicum the back side of that uh, click so that I know where that back side is. I put my click spring in there into position and we'll tap a little uh, uh, mark there so that we can drill that first hole. And I've got it over to my drill press here and of course my hand's right in the way so you can't see anything. But now I'm tapping it out and I'm using that little hockey puck like I did with the escape wheels. And uh, that puts in a, uh, a nice, we're using 080 uh, screws. And uh, now we got our second mark in there it's a little bit beyond that wire that little line that we made uh, to show us where the click would sit so it's installed and now we're ready to cross out the wheel going to use Malcolm Wiles crossing jig that I've used previously got two pieces of double-sided tape there put the wheel down on that double-sided tape and uh, uh, get it to it here and hold it into position for me there we go and I've made a little brass uh, arm there and uh, just moving the peg around. Once again, my hands are getting in the way all the time. But you get the basic idea. I'm uh, making uh, five crossing uh, on this one. Now we're back over at the piercing saw set up and uh, uh, cutting out the different sections. And there we go. I'm going to, okay, and we'll release the blade, get it saw out of the way. And there it is. So now I've got it back in the soft jaws in the vise and we're filing it out uh, to get the final shape. After we're done filing, a little bit of sandpaper in there to polish it up. This isn't the finished sanding. It'll be sanded and polished again just before I put the final clock all together. We're back upstairs now and there's the finished wheel. And you see the click spring and the click and the ratchet all installed. Now what I want to do is uh, I'll use my depthing tool here and we'll see how well it mates with the center wheel. Now there's the center wheel. We made that earlier in an earlier video with the lantern pinion on there and it's going to uh, the great wheel that uh, meshes with that lantern pinion and oh there we go. That looks pretty good. Feels good. And so that's how it's going to sit in the, in the clock when we're finally done. And there it is. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the next video. This is a Fusey. It's from uh, one of my other clocks. Uh, and you can see it's mounted onto a great wheel. But it has a curve in it like that. And the wire goes in the grooves. And it's uh, adhered to the mainspring. And what it does is it allows the spring uh, to uh, evenly dissipate power so that when you first wind it and it's really strong, uh, the, it gives a little power. And then near the end when it's getting weak at the end of the set eight days, uh, it's, it makes it stronger to keep the power about red. When you're using a compound pendulum, um, that's really important. So the next uh, video we'll be making a fusey. We'll cut that curve there. And we'll cut all those grooves with a shop made uh, uh, tool. And then the fusey will be uh, mounted on the great wheel. And uh, we'll do all that one in the next video.
And uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope I'll see you at the next one.